Welcome to tonight's In Focus discussion on transgender athletes in female sports. HB 302 would restrict transgender athletes from participating in female high school sports. Joining us now live in studio is Representative Kara Birkeland, who is the sponsor of the bill. She is also the basketball coach for the girls junior varsity team at Morgan High School. Representative Birkeland, we know it's a busy time for you. Thanks for being here tonight to be part of the discussion. Thank you so much. It's, it's I really appreciate being here and having this opportunity. So I thank you again. Thank you. Uh, what prompted you to sponsor this bill? Is there a backstory to this? Or did you have constituents reach out to you with concerns? So th this bill came about in a variety of ways. As a, as a high school coach, yes, but also as a basketball official for our high school athletic association, I've seen for years now how our girls teams are often taking a back seat to the boys teams. The crowds are, are huge for our boys games, very small for the girls games. Oftentimes the band and the cheerleaders, they don't even show up for the girls games. So when you compile that with how we see nationwide, there are transgender youth participating on the girls teams, you not just ha now have to deal with not having any support as a female athlete, but now you're looking at potentially running against a transgender individual as a woman. And that, that needed to be addressed, I felt like. I, I had a, several girls reach out to me and say, coach, please help us. Let's make sure that we have a fair playing field. Tell us about the concerns that you have with transgender athletes competing in women's sports. So my bill is directed to address the issue of fairness for women. This is 100% about making sure we have an equitable field for our women to compete in. That's all this bill is trying to do. Now, during the House Education Committee meeting yesterday, you said, quote, these athletes are breaking records that no female will be able to reach. They're taking championships, titles, and scholarships from female athletes. Do you have data, research, or examples that you could share with us on this? Yes, absolutely. I think the most well-known case of this, and, and it's a national case, but it's out of Connecticut, where in a year and a half, two transgender athletes took 85 championships and 15 state titles. On the podium, there were two transgender athletes and one woman. That, that has created a crying of our community saying, can this happen here? Should it happen here? So a follow-up question to that. Um, one of the supporting arguments that I've heard is that there are concerns with uh, the physiological characteristics that a transgender athlete could have and that puts them at a advantage over female athletes. Uh, what would you say regarding this argument and do you agree with it? Well, I think sports are about biology, right? And, and physiology. And a man's hip to knee ratio is obviously very different than a woman's in, in the majority, vast majority of cases, particularly in athletes' cases, right? Um, yes, I do, I do truly believe that someone who was born male has a physical advantage automatically because of their sex over a woman. Now, Dr. Jennifer Plum, who is a pediatrician, said during yesterday's committee meeting that there are currently no transgender athletes that play sports at Utah schools now. Therefore, it's not a problem that exists here. So in your opinion, is this a correct statement and how would you respond to this? Uh, you know what? She's correct. Yes, there are no transgender athletes currently playing in our state, which in my mind makes this the perfect time. Do we want to wait until there's a young woman who feels like she's been displaced? from the podium, or do we want to wait until there's a 16-year-old or 17-year-old child, essentially, who feels like she's being rejected because of her choices and identity? Right now is the perfect time to handle this. So it's not about one child. It's about what we believe is the best thing with the information we have. Opponents of this bill said they are concerned that if it passes, we could see an increase in the number of youth suicides. What do you think about this or what is your response? I think anytime any of our youth are struggling with suicidal thoughts or any type of mental illness, they need help, they need support, they need to know that they're loved and cared for. That is absolutely something I fundamentally believe in and will always seek to support. However, I don't believe we take away the right to equality and fairness to address that issue. 
Now, the Utah High School Activities Association is neutral when it comes to this bill, but they stated they are concerned that if this bill passes, they will be the first to potentially face lawsuits. The association did ask to be indemnified in the bill. Is it possible that this could happen? Yes, I, I think good points were raised in the committee, and that's why we as legislators meet as a committee, is to work together and make sure that the best legislation is going forward. And I, I am working with the High School Athletic Association and, and their stakeholders to ensure that the legislation that is passed will be what's the best for the state of Utah. Representative Berklin, so many more questions I want to ask you, but we're wrapping up on about 30 seconds left in this segment. I'd like to give the final words to you. Anything that you wanted to share that maybe we haven't addressed in this discussion, or maybe what's your message to the concerned individuals of the transgender community or their allies? I am very grateful to represent a diverse group in my district. I have an appreciation and respect for all walks of life, no matter your race, identity, or religious beliefs, I want to represent people. I truly do. This bill to me is about representing so many young women that want to be seen, they want to be heard, and they want to make sure their accomplishments and their sacrifices aren't in vain. And that is what this bill is for me. You've been hearing from Representative Kara Berklin, who is the sponsor of HB 302. Representative, thank you for being here tonight to talk about your bill and providing the supporting perspective. We appreciate your time. Thanks for staying with us for our second and final In Focus discussion tonight on transgender athletes in female sports. Earlier, we heard from Representative Kara Berklin, who is the sponsor of HB 302, about the supporting arguments. We now turn to the opposition. Joining us now live in studio is Dr. Candace Metzler, the Executive Director for the Transgender Education Advocates of Utah. Dr. Metzler, thank you for spending your Friday evening with us, and welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Rosie. Dr. Metzler, a Utah House committee voted eight to six to move forward with HB 302. We just heard from the supporting side of this bill. Tell us about your concerns with this piece of legislation. My concerns with this piece of legislation is, is that a lot of voices are missing from it. There, there's been little outreach, if any, to the LGBTQ community to, to try and, and work together to solve problems. This seems very one-sided. Uh, very much leaving the people who will be impacted out of a lot of the discussions. And I, I thought that, um, you know, combined with uh, House Bill 92, we're, we're looking at two bills that are being introduced right now that target the same age group. Um, and, and when we look nationally, uh, we see the same age group being targeted around the country. And so it's very concerning to the damage that's doing to the mental health of these youth. Now, the supporting side argued that the bill would level the playing field where women wouldn't be spectators in their own sports. We heard from a Southern Utah University track athlete uh, yesterday talking about uh, during the committee meeting that said that competing against transgender athletes puts her at a disadvantage. What is your response to that argument that the physiological characteristic of trans athletes provides an unfair advantage over cis women? I, I think that there are uh, lots of different sizes of body shapes, characteristics that, that aren't dependent upon someone's chromosomes or their, their sex development. Different people have different advantages and I think we're targeting a vulnerable group and suggesting that they have an advantage. And, and I'm not belaying the point that people, people have valid concerns in this discussion, but we're doing it in a very public way and targeting this age group. And I, I think the problem is the system of categor categorization, not the people who have traditionally and continue to be excluded by that system. And so it, it seems more doubling down on a, a population that's already very vulnerable. According to the U.S. Trans Survey, 22% of trans women who were perceived as trans in school were harassed so badly that they had to leave school because of it. Another 10% were kicked out of school. So let's talk about the concept of belonging and inclusion. How can the exclusion from female sports impact the mental and emotional development for a transgender student? Rosie, I, uh, I've been a therapist and I've been working with this population for 10 years. And one thing that is abundantly clear, both from what I hear from, from individuals in this age group and from my own experience when I was that age, uh, the, the message that you don't belong is getting through loud and clear. Uh, without bills like this trying to push that envelope even further, 
these young people deserve to be supported and loved and treated with the dignity and respect that other people would want for their own children. And what I find really disturbing is that we seem to be missing the point that you know, doubling down on exclusion creates an atmosphere of exclusion. And we know from research that when transgender athletes are included in schools, it benefits the entire school. The health of, of students is actually improved when they know that they can be accepted for just being different. And that shouldn't come as a surprise. Now, part of what this comes down to is that a number of people argue that sex is binary, apparent at birth and identifiable through singular biological characteristics. What's your response to this? Yeah, I think we can, we can talk about uh, Iwa Klebowska, which is, is, is an interesting to throw in here. Uh, Iwa was an incredible athlete. Uh, in, in the 60s and 1964, she won a silver and gold medal. Act, I'm sorry, she won a bronze and gold medal. In the 66 uh, European Championship, she won uh, two gold medals and a silver. And in that uh, event, people started saying that she was actually a man. And she was forced to, 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 be, uh, to undergo a, a sex uh, inspection and, and, and be looked at to make sure she wasn't a man. Uh, she was actually had all of her records stripped from her um, and was, was prevented from competing in sports uh, because she was labeled a man. And a year later, she gave birth to a child. Um, the problem is that, that people don't come in this convenient package that, that so many people would like. And for Iwa, she had a Y chromosome, which a lot of uh, proponents of, of these bills are suggesting it's that simple, that if you have a Y chromosome, then we should be able to tell that you're a man. And Iwa had a Y chromosome. She had what was called a mosaic chromosome pattern, where she had XX and XXY chromosomes. And so it gets really complex. When we talk about being able to identify sex at birth, it's really difficult to have this conversation in a really condensed amount of time. Uh, but the problem is, is that chromosomes are complex human anatomy and development is complex and we want to shove and we want to homogenize that diversity into these two really narrowly defined categories that don't fit everyone. And so the people who've been excluded continue to be excluded and when, when such people look for inclusion, it often results in fear, which I think we're seeing here. Dr. Metzler, we're learning so much during this discussion with you. Unfortunately, we're running out of time, about 30 seconds left. I'd like to get some final words from you. What would you like our viewers to know tonight? Uh, what I would like to speak to is the people who might be feeling targeted, the people who might be feeling overwhelmed by everything that's going on. And I, I want to note that with these two bills being introduced, that the sponsors are, are, are really telling us they don't have a lot of concern about the impact of this, but I am. And for those of you who may be struggling, there are people out there that care about you, that are here for you, and we want you to reach out. Uh, you can go to the Utah Pride Center, you can go to the Trevor Project, you can download the Safe UT app, and you can find help, so please do. You are not alone and you belong. Please, please reach out. There are so many community advocates who are here to help you. You've been hearing from Dr. Candace Metzler, the Executive Director for the Transgender Education Advocates of Utah. Dr. Metzler, thank you for being here tonight to share the opposition's perspective on this bill. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Rosie.